it's your talk. Okay, good. And uh, we have some realness yeah. to discuss. Yeah, so, you know, it, it's an amazing experience. Andrew and Aaron and Susie and Ben and Margaret and the rest of the crew are just so amazing and special. And, you know, I've, I've been really fortunate. I've, I've written some books and built some businesses, and I've done a lot of speaking over the years. And yesterday, I had an existential crisis. I was at practice with these guys, and I just had nothing. And it was the first time ever, and I couldn't figure it out. You know, and so I, I couldn't, I sat there, and I talked to these guys, and I couldn't figure out what I was thinking and how it was going. And, and what I realized is a year ago, on July 25th, that I was walking on stage in another hall in another time, and I was about ready to get up. I was in the green room like we have here, and I got a call. And the call was, Bridget just killed herself, my wife. This is the first time I've been on stage since then. So I really appreciate and honor this time with you guys. Boulder was, you know, is Bridget, and Bridget is Boulder, and it's been a really, really amazing, supportive community. You know, this talk was going to be about disruption, and I had to laugh at myself last night because that's what I was. I was disrupted. You know, there's a, a misperception when we stand here and we give these talks, and you see these incredible speakers come out and do all this amazing preparation. I'm so inspired by everybody who had to speak tonight, just the preparation and the hard work, the community that we've gone, we've gotten a chance to spend with, with time with people. And before, and I, I've been to TED, TED Times, and, and before I thought it was about the show, it was about the well-crafted story. But I think it's about something else, and I think what you've heard here tonight is, is something I love in Spanish, la verdad. La verdad is the truth. And I hope, that you take that away tonight, that we all are up here trying to tell our own truths in our own way. You know, it's interesting because I love Boulder and, and Boulder's given me a ton and, and disruption's been a part of my life, risk taking's been a part of my life as a rock climber and as a surfer and as a backcountry skier. And I've had an opportunity to do some really cool, you know, be in some businesses with some folks in the audience and build some businesses and write some books. And, you know, really dug that. I, I guess the thing is I've really always wanted to know what's over the horizon and around the bend, like so many other people in Boulder do. That's why I think we're all here. You know, and I've lived my life, and it's been a really magical life. A few years ago, a long time ago, actually, in the 90s, I was in a big avalanche, and that really taught me a lot about disruption as well. There were 12 or 14 of us were buried. It was a really, really scary thing. We took a thousand foot ride. The snow was fractured the whole side of the mountain, nine feet deep. And it taught me a ton, right? When you're flying down the mountain, tumbling a thousand feet, head over heels, you could feel this serene calmness when you fell. Yet, when we dug everybody out, we were okay. And it was amazing looking back on it now. Even though there were no physical scars and, and bruises, yet, the psyche of the individual and the psyche of the team really struggled. Many marriages ended, friendships. It's really hard. And, you know, this journey through businesses and, and through books and through adventures in the mountains have really led me to what I do now. I, I study innovation and, and disruption at the Laboratory of Innovations at Harvard. It's a real honor. I, I love those guys at Harvard, and, and they really gave me the opportunity to study this with them with one of the businesses I built, Victors and Spoils, um, last few years ago, on a, a company based on crowdsourcing principles. And, you know, crowdsourcing is one of these crazy things. I was at a conference, or I gave a speech at Pratt several years ago, and I started Victors and Spoils. And people were so upset by the term crowdsourcing that people threw things at me on stage. So just a crazy audience. Please don't throw anything tonight. It'd be okay, <laughs> actually, if you have a drink or something. But, you know, I think the best way to describe the potential of crowdsourcing is by a potato chip. I love potato chips, and oftentimes they're really greasy. And a potato chip manufacturer had the same problems. So they were trying to figure out how to improve, you know, the greasiness. And instead of trying to do it the old way, the old way was they shook the racks that the chips were on, and they tried to get all the, you know, oil off the chips. The problem was is that the chips broke. So instead of doing that, they tried a new way. They decided to tap into a, local, uh, into a global crowd. And by doing that, they, they wanted to source for new ideas. And they reframed the question. Instead of saying, you know, we want to remove grease from chips, they wanted to remove a viscous substance from a thin wafer. By putting it out on this platform, 
they, you know, that problem was, was answered in two weeks. And in two weeks, a violinist came up with the answer. It's incredible, isn't it? A violinist understood that if you vibrated the air at the same frequency of the oil, that the oil would actually fly off the chips. So that's what we're seeing all the time in our research at Harvard, is that there are these new disruptive business models that work better, faster, and cheaper, yet they're really, really disruptive. When I built some of my businesses, I thought it was about incentives. I thought it was about how we compensated people to try new things. But what we've realized lately, it's really about, it's really about our identities. It's really about our humanity. That these new systems, these systems that we see in our lives all the time, the internet, Facebook, Twitter, they're disrupting us. They're disrupting us in massive ways. They scare us, right? They frighten the way we, we do things. I think that's why we're in the situation we're in politically today as well. Yet I think there's a way forward. Maybe, maybe it's about language. Maybe it's about the words we use. Maybe we need to use words to build a bridge from the future to the past. You know, maybe, maybe we need to change our mindsets as well. Maybe we need to think about being more positive, positive about change, positive about differences. You know, I think a lot about things in, in analogy to sports, and, you know, we'll add the avalanche is a great analogy and, a, and, a, and an interesting story of disruption. It's probably the wrong paradigm. The other sport I really, really love is surfing. And, you know, one of the things about surfing that's so awesome is that you have to be in the environment, right? You have to be with the disruption. These massive waves roll in, and you're there trying to figure out how do you float along, how do you be with this, and black lines way out in the sea, and you're really scared. You know, when you catch a big one, you start paddling really hard, as hard as you've ever done anything in your life, and you can feel the motion lifting you up, right? The ocean, the whole ocean is lifting you up. And all of a sudden, the barrel, the, the wave is so big, it just rolls over you in a powerful wave. So you're riding along, you find this sweet spot. And oftentimes, below, the, the reef is bare. It's really scary, but frightening and awesome at the same time, right? You found this sweet spot, and you're in the right place at the right time, and you're riding this beautiful wave, this incredible disruption in the middle of the ocean. It's so powerful and so empowering. And that's what I think we need to do with our lives, right? Those things that scare us most, those things that really frighten us, maybe they're our best teachers, right? Just waiting for one moment for us to act with courage and clarity and maybe some curiosity to give us the confidence to move forward with grace and beauty. Thank you, Boulder. <laughs>